folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in the following videos we are going to be looking at the cooling system of an MGB GT. But it applies to all vehicles. It doesn't really matter if it's an MG or a Triumph or whatever you have. That mechanism or the system is always the same principle. So therefore you have in the car a radiator, you have uh, cooling hoses, you have an expansion tank, you have a water pump, you have a thermostat and of course you have a fan to cool down the radiator and you may even have a heating system in it so a small heating exchange so the cold the hot water runs through that and then there's a fan on it that blows down the hot air into the passenger's compartment and a whole bunch of hoses and water channels inside the engine block what you should never do is pour in your engine a leak stop there are products on the market that will stop small leaks don't do it this is a very bad practice but fix the car fix the leak so in the following videos we will check for leaks and there's a method to do that therefore you might need some special tools i have some tools here on my right uh, we'll talk about those in a few minutes and by the way this box is not expensive as you might think and it's really a great set to test your vehicle on the cooling system and even refill the system with it we'll also be looking at building uh, custom made hoses and i have a bunch of silicon hoses laying here and we'll look at that on how we can do that with connectors and so on because some of us have actually retrofitted a different engine in the car and we can't use standard hoses so if one of your hoses is leaking then you will have to replace it and you can't find the replacement hose so you will have to create your own hose and this is what we're going to do with this system and i'll explain you how you can do this and where you can get all these parts because i found a very good store that delivers all these pieces and then finally uh, we will refill uh, or exchange the cooling uh, liquid inside this car uh, under vacuum because that's the best method to do it so you avoid air pockets and so on so with any further ado let's start with part number one which is going to be checking for leaks and in this video we are going to check the car for cooling system leaks and to do so uh, we'll have to pressurize uh, the system because under normal operating conditions the cooling system of a vehicle is always under pressure uh, the pressure ranges between 10 and 15 psi and that is because the cooling system is a closed circuit and because it's a closed circuit water will expand under the heat of the engine and the warmer the water gets the more it expands and if water is expanding then it increases the pressure because there is no air that, or water that can escape from the cooling system now that pressure can build up to 10 or 15 psi but then that pressure has to be relieved and that's why you have a special cap on the top of your radiator or on your expansion tank and that cap is your pressure relief valve so let's have a closer look on that first and then we'll check that out if that is actually uh, working or not that would be the first test so this is the cap i was referring to this is the pressure relief cap and this is either on your radiator or on your expansion tank now never remove this cap when the engine is hot because you're going to burn yourself now there's an important note on this on on this cap and that actually defines under what pressure uh, this cap will open up you might not consider it a leak but i do uh, imagine that this valve is leaking so it's always open it doesn't work anymore so then you won't have pressure in your system and when it opens up it will let pressure out of the tank out of the uh, overrun here right that's what this overrun is all about so um i'll turn it a bit so you can see it over here you see lbs uh, 15 or 0.15 that's the pressure relief of this valve. So let's check this out if this valve is still working. That's important. So let's take it off and put it on the meter. Or if it's not even releasing, so the pressure will build up and then you can get other damage. Hoses can jump, a break or crack, and your radiator can also get some damage. So that's the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is actually put the whole cooling system of the car under pressure. And then see if the pressure holds. And if the pressure is dropping down, then you have a leak. And you need to look where you have the leak. Now, most of the time, the leak will be on the hoses or on the connection points. So you're going to need some tools. And this is a box uh, which is ideal to work on your vehicle. Um, I'm not telling you that you have to buy this box. I'm not making any commercial for this, but I'll show you in a few seconds where you can buy this. And basically, what you need is a pump to 
create pressure. Uh, this is a pump to create pressure, and you will see me using it in this video. And then also you're gonna need a vacuum pump, and this will allow you uh, to replace the complete uh, liquid in the vehicle under a vacuum, which is so good because it avoids air pockets and so on. And it comes with all kind of adapters that you can fit on all kind of different cars, even on old timers like what I have here on the MG or these other kind of con um, caps we have to use. And if you don't have any of those, then you can also use a a general one uh, which is sitting in here like a cone and you can use that. And in this video for checking for leaks we are going to use only the pressure pump uh, which is sitting in here and this is the pressure pump and then we'll hook it up and then we'll see how that goes. All right so nothing special here uh, we've got the radiator in the front we have a couple of hoses uh, the fan is over there, the water pump is in this area, and then here is the expansion tank, and this is the first area we're going to look at, because that's the cap I was referring to before, which is actually the pressure relief valve for your cooling system. So let's look on that cap first of all. So this is the cap that we've taken off the uh, expansion tank. So now we'll put some pressure on that and see when it opens up. We know it's uh, a 15 LBS uh, cap because it's marked on it. So let's take some adapter pieces so we can put it together. And then, that's why this box is handy, guys. It comes with all kinds of adapters. And I'm creating kind of a container here, and I will put the cap on this side. And I think this is the right size. Yes, it is. And then we lock that up. So this is now kind of a sealed... Um, Oops, not fitting right. I gotta fit it right now. Now it fits right. So uh, this is like a, a sealed container now. So we'll put pressure in this side. Then we look on the dial and see at what moment in time uh, the valve will open up. You will hear it and you will see it. So let's hook it up and see. I have the cap locked onto the pressure pump. And now uh, we can put some pressure up and see uh, when the pressure is relieved on this cap. So. Hopefully you can see it. 10 PSI, 11, a little bit more. So you see it's releasing at around 12, 13 PSI. So that's good. I know this is a good cap and it's actually holding the pressure as well. So we are quite happy with this cap. That's a working cap. If the cap would not do it, the needle would go all the way in the red and that would be bad because you would have overpressure on the car. If it stays too low or no indication whatsoever, then you're going to lose pressure in the cooling system all the time and that's no good either. So this is a pretty good cap. So this is the cap in question and you can actually see that we have a seal here that is sealing off um, the overrun and it can only open up if this is depressed. See, so you have to push on this to depress it and then that spring load determines the relief pressure. That's why we just tested. Now often the spring is worn out or you have leaks or you have a broken seal here. All these things can happen to this cap. So make sure that the cap is good. They are not expensive new, so go ahead and buy a new one if necessary. Uh, but this is important, guys. So folks, um, the next thing we're going to do is put pressure on the system. We know that the cap is working fine, so now let's pressurize the system and see uh, if it holds up the pressure. So what we're going to do is uh, put the special cap up, like this one. We'll put air pressure in and we'll pump it up to about, uh, let's say, 1 kilogram or 15 psi, because that's what the cap uh, uh, relief is and then we let it sit there for a while and see if it's holding the pressure the system should be holding the pressure and we will be looking for leaks now i suspect on this card to have some leaks because somebody converted it and they did a real lousy job on the hoses uh, i don't know what they've done but they stitched it all together and you'll see my next video on how we're going to replace those hoses because i already know that they are having a problem so um let's hook that up and see how it goes all right, so we're going to put the special cap up and in the box that you've seen, uh, I have all kind of caps and this is a uh, pretty good cap, this one. It fits nicely. Got to make sure it fits because otherwise uh, you can't do the test. So I'm going to lock this down pretty well. Now on the top, now I will attach the pressure meter. And we'll pump it up until we reach uh, 15 PSI.
So this is the meter and I'm going to pump it up to about uh, 15 psi which is over there. I'm going to let it sit there. I'm not going to do more than that because that's what the cap says. So it would be silly to do more. You might have to pump a little bit because now you're putting pressure on the system. I think this is about right. Yeah, I'm going to leave this and see what happens. If pressure drops, then you know. But you know what? I already see a water leak and that's not good at all. And as you can see, this hose is actually leaking. Here we go. Water. See, water comes out on the sides here. So that's not good. This is a bad hose and I expected that because this hose is really lousy put together. So we'll build a new custom-made hose for that. So this is how you can check it. You can check all over the engine and see how it goes and where you have the leaks. You will see the water dripping and then check every so often the meter. Let it sit here for about an hour if yours looks okay and then you can actually check the reading on the meter if it's still the same as you started. So the meter, meanwhile, has already dropped a little bit. So we have that water leak and I've seen it where it is, so we're going to fix that. So folks, this was part number one on how you can check leaks on your vehicle on the cooling system and on how you can check the pressure relief valve. That's the first thing you should do always uh, before you start refilling the system. Now, we know we have a leak on the water hose right here, so we're going to replace that hose uh, first of all. Now, the problem here is that this is a custom-made hose because this is a retrofit engine. So I'm going to show you on how you can make your own custom-made hoses with silicon-based tubing. But that's for the next video, so keep watching. Thank you for viewing, and I'll see you in my next video.